Hello everyone and welcome to race 2 of 29 here on the 1988 throwbacks. We're off the Daytona 500 where driver Rusty Wallace finally got his first career win. My goodness did he dominate the race. My goodness could it not be a bigger win. So Rusty Wallace winner of the Daytona 500. You can see how the points stack up here. Uh, not as Hendrick Motorsports dominated as I thought it would be, but nonetheless, there are definitely a decent amount of them up here. We'll see how they fare now coming into Richmond. Drivers, to your car. This will be the final race here at this configuration of Richmond. And, wow, two races in a row now, Elliot's got the pole. Of course, Elliot tragically could not, boy, he couldn't have got his season off to a worse start. His car's motor lets go on the first lap of the race and finishes dead last. Anyways, here's your top ten starting order. Bill Elliott on pole, Dale Earnhardt second, Davey Allison third, Jeffrey Bodine fourth, um, Daryl Waltrip fifth, Ricky Rudd sixth, Rusty Wallace seventh, Terry Labonte eighth, Kyle Petty ninth, and Tim Richmond routing out your top ten. Again, Rusty Wallace finally got his first career win at Daytona. Man, that was that was emotional. Um, I'm not sure what's going on here, but I'm not getting any audio on my end. Oh, good. I have to restart it anyways. You know, because, you know, if it's a blow-up, then yes, that goes. But, uh, if it's a, I have a rule where if it's not a clean start, where if not everybody, uh, starts off the line, I restart everything. All right. So if we don't get a clean start, I'm not bothering. Just wait for this thing to Drivers, begin. Start your engines. And there we go, the command has been given. Let's see if we get a clean start this time around. We'll figure out right now. Yep, everyone's good to go. So we get a clean start this time. Elliot comes off of turn number four. And here we go, green flag is out here at Richmond. Now it looks like Bill Elliott's going to take to the point here. Davey Ellison in second. And Daryl Waltrip and Dale Earnhardt trying to fight for the third position. Elliot's got the lead right now, and looks like he's trying to take off with it. Daytona 500 was not kind to him, and we have the sophomore, Davey Allison, who impressed a bunch, by the way. I think he impressed everybody at the Daytona race. Doing, uh, shockingly well, may I add. Uh, in 1987, even winning a race in his rookie year. We haven't seen that since. Oh, this guy, Dale Earnhardt, did it back in 1979. Yeah, it's been that long. And uh, I have a feeling it might be another while before uh, we see another rookie win because I don't see any of these guys, any of the rookies this year, taking a victory. 
Uh, it seems very, very unlikely that a uh, rookie's going to take a victory this year. Last year we had a pretty strong set of rookies led by Damian Ellison, but we also had Brett Bodine. He was in a really decent car. Uh, Derek Cope was in the top 10 a few times. So it was really down between. You know, came down between Allison and Bodine, but Allison just showed the consistency that Brett didn't, and we saw uh, Davey Allison win Rookie of the Year last year. And again, the win, of course. Absolutely cannot forget about the win. That was stellar, to say the least. As of right now, the fastest slap. Oh! <laughs> Hello there, outside retaining wall. Well, looks like he claimed its first victim, at least near the front anyways. Dale Earnhardt uh, kissed the outside wall pretty good there. You can see Wallace, he's going to try to knock on the door for fourth place. And boy, I'm going to tell you, Wallace is going to try to ride the momentum of winning the Daytona 500. He's going to try to ride that wave of momentum all the way at least through as many races as he can. And he's going to try to move into fourth here. And we knew that this team, all that they needed was that one spark of confidence and they'd be off. Again, this is the same team that led all drivers with 20 top 10s in 1986. Come back in 1987, not necessarily doing that stellar of a performance, but still 16 top 10s. And in the top 10 in points was Wallace. Just needed that spark, and I'll tell you what, that was a huge, that was a huge gain of confidence to the team, and I have a feeling that we're going to see this 27 contending in a lot of races this year. And taking a look at this, he's got speed too. Does Wallace, he's really running down Davey Ellison right now for the third position. Ellison swung wide a little bit there. Got some cars down pit road, including Kelly Yarborough, uh, Sterling Marlin, and Terry Labonte. It's a not good day as far as few leaders. Most of those drivers had uh, gotten into the outside wall, actually. Probably wanted to come down pit road, look at some damage. Likely. So far, Elliot has taken off, and he's ran away. He's fled. Well, every lap of this race thus far, Earnhardt's pretty much been second the whole race as well. So, hey. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty much right. Looking into some lap traffic here. Oh, boy, Harry Gant's really stuck back here. Every once in a while, you get one of those top 10 cars that are stuck back here. Gant's one of them. Uh, Light Speed's another. Although he's really not a top 10 car. Kawicki's stuck back here. You can see Ken Schrader and Bobby Ellison. Neil Bonnick has pounded the outside wall there. So a couple people are definitely stuck further back in the field than they would like. It be noted that all four of Kendrick Motorsports cars right now are running inside the top 10. If you take a look at Daryl Waltrip here, he's running currently in fourth. He was able to get back around Rusty Wallace. Wallace looks like he's about to lose fifth to Kyle Petty. Well, three out of the four Kendrick cars are running in the top 10. You have ninth here with Jeffrey Bodine in 10th. With Tim Richmond, I'm sorry about that. Um, you have to go all the way back to 13 to find Ken Schrader in the 35. So scratch off what I said. Uh, Hendrick, not all four Hendrick cars are in the top 10, but all four of them are in the top 13. I once again mistook that 26 car for the 35. Uh, here's. Probably a surprising contender in this race. How about Mark Martin here in the sixth car? Uh, up inside the top ten. And I gotta say, again, this was a pretty much a reject driver. 
he led a couple laps during the Daytona 500, and including one rather late in the race that caught a false shock. Like, this driver coming back for a full-time schedule, the first time in God knows how many years, going to start by winning the 500? Alas, it wasn't meant to be, though, and you can see that Martin is certainly... Uh, well, he's certainly going to try to ride the wave that he had at Daytona. Currently in eighth. Phil Parsons, he's really been reeling ever since he took the victory at Riverside. He had an excellent race at Atlanta, finishing inside the top ten. He had a pretty decent Daytona race, but then didn't really get good pitch strategy and finished towards the rear. And uh, here he is again. Phil Parsons inside the top ten, and he's about to get picked off here by Martin. So Phil Parsons inside the top ten, trying to, again, just trying to ride those waves. Boy, is Elliott and Earnhardt a significant amount faster than the rest of the field. Earnhardt appears to be a little faster, but not much. You can see Derek Cope, Kelly Yarbrough, and Brad Knopfsinger kind of getting it in together, battling for the last position. Well... Larry Pearson's already retired, and same thing with uh, Morgan Shepard. Elliott dives it in deep, trying to get around Derek Cope. That's the unsponsored 68 car you see there that just pounded off the outside wall. See Earnhardt cruising in second. Led all drive led all drivers with eight wins in nineteen eighty five I'm mean, not nineteen eighty five in nineteen eighty seven last year. Finished fifth in final championship points. Count it fifth in final championship points. He was obviously beat by points winner uh, Tim Richmond and Bill Elliott, both of them having five wins apiece. Terry Labonte, who had two wins and Bobby Ellison, who also had two wins. And they were definitely more consistent than Earnhardt, but I will say nobody won more races than Earnhardt. Nobody led more laps than Earnhardt in 1987. And uh, just more bad luck that seems to have plagued this team since, since they have came in, really, in 1984. 1984, they ended up with five wins, and I think they ended up like seventh in the championship. In 1985, they had no wins. Again, due mainly due to bad luck. Everyone was like, oh, Earnhardt going away from Bud Moore. This was a big mistake. Well, it turned out to be successful. Come around 1986, he comes back and wins the championship. Not necessarily in dominating fashion, but he does win the championship. And then 1987, again, goes out there, dominates, but just, again, bad luck. So we'll see if uh, Earnhardt can get any better luck here in 1988. Speaking of another team that's usually plagued by bad luck, but at least has that one championship, you're looking at that team right now, Bill Elliott. This team has been plagued by bad luck, probably should have won the championship in 85, probably should have won the championship in 87, and neither panned out for them, and they actually almost lost the 1984 championship, where they had over a 550 point advantage, especially after winning four races in a row, heading into the final 10 races of the season, and they lost the plot towards the end. And it was actually a, a little sad to see that they lost the plot, but, man, just some bad luck has struck Elliott late in the seasons. He always looked so strong. He doesn't look very strong early on in the season usually, but he always has a strong second third of the season, and then he'll just fall off a cliff in the final third, and I mean, again, bad luck will strike him. And 
Uh, we've already really talked about Davy Allison. How about uh, Daryl Waltrip? Boy, a lot of people were talking in the first half of 1987 saying, what was Daryl Waltrip thinking moving away from Junior Johnson, the team that he won three championships with in dominating fashion in 81, 82, and 85? And he comes here to Hendrick Motorsports in a brand new team, and they flopped bad. This 17 team was not as anywhere near as successful as anyone expected them to be, and as anyone wanted them to be either. And it was just generally seen, looked down upon as a bad move. But as the second half of the season started materializing, started cutting some good finishes together and boom he really uh, drove home the point that yeah maybe it was a good move he ended up winless in 1987 but is definitely looking for some wins this year Kyle Petty well he has one win and that was at Talladega in 1986 of course, his win is not remembered by anybody because everybody remembers that race. It was a race where Benny Parsons got T-boned at nearly 200 miles an hour and nearly died. And his career ended there. Kyle Petty, of course, would go on to win the race. But, uh, yeah, that, that, nobody really remembers that. Outside of that, Al Petty's had mixed success. Certainly nowhere near as much success as his dad, Richard, or his granddad, Lee. Uh, but we'll have to see. There he goes. And now we're talking about the 1987 Winston Cup Series champion, 1986 Daytona 500 winner, Tim Richmond. And boy, I have a feeling that those accolades are only going to, that accolade list is only going to get longer as time progresses. This kid is straight fire. No doubt about it, Tim Richmond's one of the best, if not the best, in the business in driving a car today. Um, he straight out beat everybody in consistency in 1980. In 1987, uh, did a fantastic job just week in, week out, finishing in the top 10, finishing in the top 5. And he was either in the front or in a wreck. There was no in between, and uh, he was only in a wreck a few times. So, Tim Richmond really had a successful 1987. It's going to be very hard to back up that level of consistency. But I tell you what, if there's anybody that can do it, it's this kid right here, Tim Richmond. Absolutely. We have talked about Martin before. Don't really have much to go off of, kind of like Davey Allison. You can almost think of this as his rookie year per se, since he hasn't ran a full season since 1983. Um, but this, he is not a rookie. We would like to stress that he is not a rookie. Uh, but he has not raced full-time since 1983 and hasn't even raced in the Cup Series since 1986. Ricky Rudd, new team, hoping for some new success. And I don't blame him. Yeah, uh, that 15 team, although he looked very strong in 1984, Probably one of the more consistent drivers from the up and down season of 1985 where I thought just about anybody can win the championship but then come down to the final five races and it was Walter, 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 everything. But yeah, but ever since 1985, Ricky Rudd seemed to have lost the plot. He hasn't won a race since 1985. And uh, he really would want to get a win back in, a uh, one back in that win column. And you want to talk about bad luck? 
you're looking at the symbol of bad luck, that number five team. Uh, Jeffrey Bodine, and boy, where do we start? A combined 18 DNFs over the past two years. This team cannot be happy with that performance, especially with the way that they performed in 1984 and 85, getting five wins between two seasons. Oh, boy. 1986 was a disappointing year for Bodine. He had a hard time getting... He didn't have a hard time getting into the top 10, but he had a hard time staying in the top 10, getting DNFs left, right, front, back, center, forward. Oh, the inconsistency just sickens me out of this team sometimes. And uh, 1987 was arguably worse, where he didn't even come home with a single top 10 finish. Until the fight, until four races left in the season, and oh, one of the messiest seasons of all time. No wins, ten DNFs, and it was probably the biggest flop season out of anybody. I mean, that was the definition of a flop season. Really rough watching uh, Jeffrey Bodine at some times. Oh, Ken Schrader has uh, gotten credit for leading a lap, so he still needs to pit. He'll come down to pit road now, perhaps trying to get credit for leading two laps. We know that Terry Labonte's off sequence, so right now it seems like your leader, quote unquote, would be uh, Kyle Petty, but now uh, looks like Bodine's going to pull out in front of Petty here. Maybe not. I have to see. Whoa. Oh, there's the nine car. Way up here. Oh, we got a slow car. It's Brett Bodine. Caution is out. Earnhardt's not on the lead lap. Oh. Now it's going to get interesting. Who's being scored on the lead lap and who isn't? Find that out for you at the line. It looks like it's going to be more bad luck for Dale Earnhardt, Jeffrey Bodine, and others. Oh my. Let's see what we got. Yeah, only 11 cars are being shown on the lead lap. Wow. A couple of those cars on pit road right now, actually. Don't want to fall a lap down, but an interesting strategy to take uh, four tires on this. Try to get some fresh tires for the restart. I like these guys' strategy, honestly. This is a one-stop race. Now we're going to see who all is on the lead lap here. Is that going to be it? Is that those the 11 cars? Yes. So here we go, folks. The 11 people are on, that are on the lead lap are as follows. We have Bill Elliott. He's leading, obviously. Uh, Kyle Petty second, Daryl Waltrip third, and Davey Ellison fourth, Ricky Rudd fifth, and th those are no surprises. And then we have an interesting guy. We have Eddie Bierschwal in sixth, and Ken Schrader seventh, Richard Petty eighth, Mark Martin ninth, Tim Richmond tenth, Sterling Marlin eleventh, and 
Are they going to score Earnhardt on the lead lap? I don't think so. I think that's the scoring being optimistic, I'm afraid. I think they're going to put him a lap down again, and indeed they do. Sorry to the Earnhardt fans out there. I know they are try they're true, prideful Earnhardt fans, but uh, this is and this just isn't your day. This probably isn't your live stream either, because God does Earnhardt have some despicable luck in these throwbacks races. Oh, whoa! Speaking of despicable luck, Kyle Petty just his motor just let go. Black smoke coming out of the back end of the 21 car. What is going on here? Black smoke coming out of the 21 car. He's slow all the way on the left side of the track. Goodness me. Oh, good lord. Don't, don't pin him in there. Oh, this is... 21's got to get to pit road. Someone's got to let him in. Brad Knopfsinger's got to let him in. No. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, more shenanigans. Caution probably got called off. No, they're not calling off the caution. Green flag. <laughs> Let's go racing, boys. Caution's back out. Wait a second. This could have massive implications here. 17 can get to the bottom of the nine. Not going to happen. Harry Gant's going to be unlapped. Good lord. Leaders coming to pit road. I've seen it all. That's something that happens on the throwback streams a little too often as well. Oh boy. Not like it really took out anybody else, though, so that's a good thing. And we're going to have another chance at a clean restart here, which is another good thing. Fresh tires for the leaders. Oh, pulls out in front of Schrader. Schrader tried to pull a quickie there. That was a tricky move there by Kenny. Some drivers opting not to pit to be, uh, well, they're not going to get a wave around, but they will start in front of a leader. Perhaps hoping for another quick caution. Which, hey, by all means, do it. Yeah. If you think it's going to get you a position, do it. Uh, cars that haven't pit that are a lap down include Buddy Baker, Michael Waltrip, Jeff Borine, uh, Dave Marcus, and there's uh, leader Ricky Rudd, so that, that's the only guy that's actually going to start in front. Uh, but the lap cars that don't pit continue, we got Neil Bonnet, um, <laughs> Neil Bonnet, Brett Bodine, Dale Jarrett, uh, Terry Labonte, etc. But we got some leaders that didn't pit, and one of them was Dale Jarrett. I did. <laughs> Ricky Rudd. Where did I get Dale Jarrett driving the 26 from? Good lord. Neil Jarrett never drove the 26. At least to my knowledge, watch. We'll probably go to like 1991, Dale Jarrett's driving the 26. I'll be like, mm.
Oh, we got another car slow, and it's Ricky Rudd now. Oh, dear Lord. What's going on with the leaders? Dear Lord. Rudd's going to merge down into pit road here, I bet. And do his best. There it is. Wow. Oh, <laughs> that makes Tim Richmond your leader. With Bill Elliott second, Ken Schrader third, Mark Martin fourth, Eddie Fierschwell fifth. And look at all the drivers trying to get back out to the lead lap. If there's a quick caution, my God, are there going to be a lot of people getting back on the lead lap. Tons of people only one lap down here. And uh, yeah, like you said, quick caution equals... A ton of people getting back to the lead lap, so huge implications here. Coming to the line, you're with the leader, Tim Richmond, the red 25 Chevrolet. Green flag is out. This can get interesting quick. It's also going to get interesting trying to determine who's on the lead lap, who's not on the lead lap. Who's there? Who's not there? And Richmond's going to get to the bottom here. So Richmond's going to at least take off a little bit. Elliot getting side... Oh, there we go! There's the caution! Elliot involved! Good lord! Dale Jarrett, Dale Earnhardt, Bill Elliott, they all pound the outside wall. Caution! Look at all the cars getting back on the lead lap. Bring that back. See who gets back on the lead lap here. Oh, boy. So let's see who it's going to be. Dave Marcus, Kale Yarbrough, Lake Speed, Rodney Coombs, Jeff Bodine, Michael Waltrip, Rusty Wallace, Phil Parsons, Bobby Owen Jr., Derek Cope, I think, only gets one lap back. Nope, he's back on the lead lap. Uh, Bobby Allison, Buddy Baker, Terry Labonte. Oh, my God. Good lord. That is a lot of people getting back on the lead lap. And that is a lot of people that are getting back on the lead lap that didn't pit. That is interesting. Tim Richmond's obviously going to come in for a pit stop. Or not. <laughs> I mean, oh, the 75 is going to come in. I don't see any sign of an Elliott retirement. Still got to be on the track somewhere. And uh, yeah, indeed he is. So yeah, Elliott's still out there. So, who does that put the leader as? Schrader. Ken Schrader. Wow! <laughs> okay! Yeah, that's what I said. Ladies and gentlemen, there are now 23 cars on the lead lap. The 15 and the 7 are on the tail end of the lead lap. So technically, technically, there's 25. And when we restarted, there was 9. So 14 cars got their lap back on that restart. That is a lot of people. And you know what? Earnhardt's 
Earnhardt's knocked out on an accident. Elliott's knocked out on an accident. Tim Richmond's got to start way back in the field. We're going to have a dogfight for the first position here between a bunch of mid-carters. Schrader, Marlin, Martin, uh, yeah. uh, Davey Allison, Harry Gant, Ricky Rudd. Like I said, a bunch of mid-carters here. People that you would expect to finish in the top 10 occasionally, but not championship contenders. And uh, I think the person that fits the bill, that bill the most, is, well, Ken Schrader. He's still looking for his first career win. Sterling Marlin hasn't won since the fall 1986 Talladega race, so he would like to get a one in his win column. Mark Martin hasn't won a race. Obviously... Davey Allison has, but he would like to put a win in his column. And Harry Gant has not won a race since 1985. He would like to get back into the win column. Same thing with Ricky Rudd. Eddie Bershaw looking for his first win. Wall Tripp and Petty and Elliott, for that matter, all have numerous wins. So pace car is in. Ken Schrader is your leader. 1985 Rookie of the Year. The green flag is out. He summed it up perfectly right there. 1985 Rookie of the Year. Ken Schrader. And now he's driving for one of the best teams right now, Hendrick Motorsports. Well, we're going to see how he does. Oh, there we go. Neil Bonnet. Oh, Neil Bonnet's not in the lead lap. Here comes Harry Gant and company down on the bottom. Again, people that haven't won uh, since the Earth has been created by God. Um... <laughs> Wow. So yeah, yeah, these these guys right here on the bottom, they're they're rather hungry. I mean Richard Petty hasn't won since nineteen eighty three, good lord. So right now Sterling Marlin is your leader. As uh, you saw Tim Richmond in the pits again. Makes you wonder who's going to be the points leader at the end of all of this madness. Oh, right now. I think it would be Schrader, but he continues to fall back, so I don't really know. That 44 car continues to lead. And boy, Sterling Moreland could come away with another huge victory here. First time winning for his new team. I mean, when he won in 1980... Oh, Earnhardt hard off the wall there. He's been doing that a lot. I mean, it would be his first win for the new team. This is the team that Terry Labonte nearly piloted to not just one, but two championships. So, hey... Why not give it a, an effort with uh, Sterling Marlin? And uh, he seems to be doing quite well here at Richmond. And uh, look who's coming into second place now. That's Richard Petty. Boy. <laughs> 198 career wins. The winningest driver in stock car history. Fan favorite. Everyone loves him. It's Richard Petty. Trying to go out there, prove that he's not just old and washed up at anymore. He can still race. And uh, second place finish today would definitely... Uh, give him some ground against the naysayers. He did really well at Daytona as well. So Richard Petty trying to lay waste to the naysayers today. 
uh, by putting in a, an impressive top five, if not trying to go for the win. Jarrett's not giving him any favors right now, I will tell you that. And now Ricky Rudd's going to try to pass uh, the king here. And he should be able to. And, uh, indeed. There he goes around him. And again, there's the 44, Sterling Marlin. Trying to pick up career win number two, his first non-super speedway win. And uh, that would be something. Of course, he's the son of dirt track legend Cuckoo Marlin, who had a rather successful time in NASCAR during the late 60s and early 70s. Ricky Rudd moving into second. He's trying really hard. We'll see if he can catch up to and pass Sterling Marlin potentially. I don't think it's going to happen because Marlin's a pretty strong car up front. Meanwhile, there's a certain Pontiac that is cutting through the field like it's butter right now. And that is Rusty Wallace. Boy, he is a man on a mission right now. Yeah, he's just trying to gain as many points as possible. He fell a lap down. You can see his right side's a little pancake, but no worries. And uh, as you said, he is a man on a mission right now. Wouldn't surprise me if he was able to get around Richard Petty and maybe catch up to uh, Ricky Rudd and get around him as well. Would not surprise me in the slightest. Speaking of trying to pass Ricky Rudd, uh, here is an expert in passing. Yes. Richard Petty trying to get it done. Trying to get around Ricky Rudd here. Can he do it? Yes. Now he's got to get around fellow Pontiac, Neil Bonnet. And we got three Pontiacs in a row here, actually. Now we got Bonnet, Petty, and Wallace. Although it doesn't really look like Petty's much faster than Bonnet right now. We know that Wallace definitely is. And here's the... 44 way up here. He's gone. So it's really looking like Sterling Marlin's going to pull an old trick out of the bag. And I'm telling you what, this 27 car is possessed. Good lord, here comes Rusty Wallace. He's going to move in a second. And if this is where he finishes, that will be eight career second place finishes for him. Which is kind of like having nine career wins, which is a lot for the stage in his career that he's in. Yeah, but finishing second isn't the same as finishing first. And uh, Wallace will definitely tell you that one, especially after winning the 500. That had to have been a huge relief to that team. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I would not write off Sterling Marlin as the winner yet. This 27 car is running crazy around the track right now. Easily fastest. Easily, and it's not even close. He just picked up four tenths of a second. Wow. On Sterling Marlin. Four tenths of a second. How much is Jim Sauter going to hold him up? And can he pass Sterling Marlin? Well, he needs to get there. 
Yes. And how much is solder going to hold them up? Answer, zero. He just drove right around them. Folks, don't write off this 2017 yet. I'm going to try to get back-to-back -back wins to start off the season. And what a way that would be to start a season. Go into a season with no career wins. Oh, I'm just going to win the Daytona 500 and the Pontiac Excitement 400. No big deal. Uh -huh. He might do it, too. That's the scary part. Those two lap cars are going to prevent him, though. Yep. Brett Bodine and Alan Kowicki will be uh, getting in the way of the 27 here. Progress has not seemed as fast as it did. Uh, maybe a lap, maybe three or four laps ago, where he caught, where he was catching, where he was catching that guy by over four tenths of a second a lap. But uh, Sterling Marlin's starting to pull away here. Certainly looking that way. Brett Bodine trying to put up a fight against Rusty Wallace, but uh, no, no avail there. Sterling Marlin's doing exactly what he needs to do, and that's just clock laps consistently. Just keep ticking away the lap counter. He's got a comfortable lead. Not too comfortable. He can't just slack off, get comfortable, mail in these final few laps. He still needs to put a decent time up here. But, uh, yeah... Uh, aside from anything absolutely substantial, I don't see any reason why the 44 is going to lose this race. Wallace caught up a full quarter of a second in that sector. Unbelievable. Wallace is doing an excellent job right now of catching, but uh, he's not going to get there. Three laps to go. 1.2 seconds. Yeah, he's not going to get there. And unless Marlin gets into the wall or something else a little more significant. Yeah, the 44 is... He's got this. Oh, the caution is out. That'll seal it. Wow. That'll seal it. Oh, good lord. How about this? Two unlikely winners to start out this 1988 Winston Cup throwback season. Good lord. Now we'll take a look at it. They're going to come to the white flag this time around. Then we'll figure out what the uh, meaning of the caution is. A very crafty Sterling Marlin has just pulled the jack out of the box, ladies and gentlemen. He is going to win the Pontiac Excitement 400. Rusty Wallace is going to finish second again. Boy, that has to seem like a familiar position for him. Eight career second place finishes now. With a ratio of one win. But that does mean that Rusty Wallace will exit this race as a points leader. Here we go. Checkered flag in the air. It's Sterling Marlin with the win. Yay. Now to figure out the... Uh, what happened during that caution? Yeah, that's the uh, key thing there, is what happened to bring out the caution. Uh, 
Oh, good lord. Another pit barrier thing. See what happened here. Just nailed the pit barrier. Schrader and Beerschwall Paul plow in. That was some serious driver error. Sterling Marlin picks up career win number two here at Richmond. And he can't be viewed as a, that can't be viewed as a fluke. Not at all. So. <laughs> Undoubtedly, the points leaders Rusty Wallace with a win and a second place finish in two events. That's pretty good. Ken Schrader is going to be third. Richard, I mean, Bobby Hillen Jr. is in second. That's probably surprising. Ken Schrader, third. How about Richard Petty, fourth in points after two races? Fifth is Ricky Rudd, sixth Mark Martin, seventh Phil Parsons, eighth Alan Kowicki, ninth Daryl Waltrip, and tenth your champion last year, Tim Richmond. Oh. My. Well. Yeah, it looks like... Well, the next race is going to be Rockingham. We'll see you there. Oh, boy.